double pistols. Those are the dad pistols right there. Like, if you throw this at somebody, you're dad. All right, guys, welcome back. And today we're going to do a complete deep dive into what I take in my bow case, what's in there, why it's in there. And we're going to go through all of my gear, bows, arrows, broadheads, releases, how I have different stuff set up, why I keep it like that, uh, everything. So let's take a look at my bow case and get into it. All right. So first off, let's start with the bow. All right, so here is my bow. You'll First thing you'll notice on here is that I have uh, a lot of protective items on my bow. So I have one of these Primo's neoprene bow slings that I carry on my bow. I'm a big fan of the Primo's ne uh, neoprene, the, the, the. I'm a big fan of the Primo's neoprene bow sling. The reason I like that primarily is it keeps dirt out of my cams when I'm raising and lowering my bow uh, up into the tree or lowering out. So really like those. As you can see, there's plenty of dirt on it already. So that's all dirt that I'm keeping out of my cam track, out of my string. I think that's important. So definitely always rocking the Primo's neoprene bow sling. I also keep a nice, some type of bow sight cover on my bow. Um, the reason I like to keep the bow sight cover on here is just because of the same reason I like the neoprene bow sling. I like to keep dirt and sticks and everything out from hitting anything that it can. So in this case, I don't like having the ability or the potential for something to mess up my sight. Obviously your sight's pretty important while you're hunting. So I wanna make sure that that bow sight cover is on there and protecting it. This is a super cheapo one from Amazon. The reason that it's on there is because I'm running the Garmin site and the Garmin site's pretty big. There are not many bow site covers that can go uh, and, and hop on to the Garmin site. So that's important to me to keep there. Let's take the bow sling cover off and let's talk about my bow and why I have it set up the way that I do. All right, so this is a Matthews V3. And on top of that, it's a V3 and First Light Spectre, which is super cool. I beat the crap out of this bow. It took it, it smiled back, it wanted more. Awesome bow. I have mine set up with custom orange strings. That's just kind of my little flavor. I like the orange. Um, but here's how I've set this up. So I'm running the 31. I also have a 27. I'm gonna be doing a video review soon upcoming of the comparison between the 31 and the 27. Uh, but this was my bow that I took around and hunted all over the Midwest with this year. I'm running it with a Garmin sight. Um, I like the Garmin sight. I love having the rangefinder paired with my bow. Very easy. I also really love the fact that the Garmin sight will let me know if I'm torquing the bow one way or another. So that to me is a big thing. And it's just nice to be able to incorporate that into my shot routine uh, to just range the animal, settle the pin on it and crack it. So I like the Garmin sight, even though 99.9% .9 of my shots are like 12 to 15 yards. Uh, it's still nice to have the rangefinder built in and kind of just have that repetition there. And again, I love the ability to have uh, the, the torque kind of shown on there. I'm running the Matthews Integrate Rest on here. Uh, really love that rest. I have my rest set at 13 16 I tune everything at 13 16 of a center shot. I like to run the bottom of my arrow through the center of the burger hole. I've talked about that some in the past on some of my tuning videos, but I like the way that makes a bow hold. I feel like that is the ultimate way to set a bow up uh, for me. And you know, might not be for you, but that's how I've set it up always. So I will always tune at 13 16 of an inch. And then as I get back further from the target, once I paper tune, uh, you know, shoot a fletched arrow through paper at about 15 yards, I'll make minor, minor, like 132nd of a, <laughs> 132nd of an inch adjustment, say that 10 times fast, uh, to my to my rest in order to get it absolutely perfect through paper. But I found that in all the bows that I've tuned, once I do that, it is just able to shoot any broadhead on the market. So the rest is at 13 16 That's how I like to run it. Uh, I adjust the top hats, obviously, to get the bow to where it needs to be. Uh, other than that, really nothing special. Uh, well, it's special, but 
Other than that, I have it 68 pounds. Uh, I shoot a 30 and a half inch draw length and, and that's my setup. I'm also running the, uh, the front stabilizer on there. This is the 10 inch stab. Uh, really like it, sweet piece of gear, would recommend it. And then I keep a bow sling on here because uh, I've always shot them. I've never needed one, but I'd like to have it there in case I do need it. So that's my bow, that's how I set it up. Let's look at my arrows and see how I run that. In the front pouch of my bow sling, you are going to find a six arrow Matthews quiver. Big fan of the Matthews quivers. I love the way they lock onto the bow. They're nice and tight. They're easy to get on and off. What I've done is I've removed the back Allen head screws here just a little bit, kind of backed them out about halfway. I've taken a piece of D-loop cord. I've run it through there, tied a couple knots on and cinched it down. And what that's allowed is a nice little way to hang my quiver in the tree. So this works great. Uh, big fan of that. I like how easy compact it is also, also I don't hunt with my quiver on, so a quiver to me, really not that important other than carrying my arrows to and from the tree. I like being able to set this up in the tree. It works great, so big fan. Uh, moving on to my arrows. Boom. There's the business end of 565 grains of, of naughty. I'm shooting day six, 300 spine arrows. I have these cut at 29 and a half inches carbon to carbon because the outsert adds a little less than three quarters of an inch on it. So overall that gets me exactly where I need to be with a 30 and a half inch draw length. I'm currently running the Day6 Fletchings. These are AAE Max Stealth veins with the Day6 logo on them. I like them. I have two white Fletchings, one yellow. Um, I'm a big fan of having white everything in the woods with the exception of the cock vein. I also have a, I believe this is an eight inch white arrow wrap on there. Um, Again, I like white because I'm able to pick it up. I can look at the arrow. I can see blood right away. I can notice bubbles. I can, I can pick up a lot of things about the blood immediately upon recovering my arrow, which then later tell me how long I have to wait before recovering the game or going to pursue the blood trail. So white is your friend in the woods. It's also, you know, you see a lot of people with blaze orange or other really bright fluorescent colors uh, for wraps and everything. That's cool if you want to run that, but I found that white is the easiest color to find in the woods. There are very few things that are bright, bright white in the woods. So unless I'm hunting in the snow, this is a great option for me. And these arrows weigh in right around 560 grains. I have the 55 grain insert up front and I'm running a nocturnal knock on the back. I really like the nocturnal knocks. I find that they have the best, most accurate fitment when compared to the stock knocks that I'm running so that I don't have any issue with knock pinch on my knock sets or anything like that. So it's important to make sure that the knocks that you're shooting both in practice and in a hunting scenario are the same. And I found that these nocturnals are the best. Plus they have an insane, insanely long battery life. I've actually gone back out a day after shooting an animal for a buddy of mine who had these nocturnal knocks and his knock was still glowing bright. Um, pretty impressive to say the least. Onto the business end of the arrow. I'm shooting the Day6 Evo X broadhead. Uh, I believe this is an inch and a quarter across and then I have a three quarter inch bleeder vein on here that I've been testing for these guys which is really awesome. Overall you get two inches of cutting diameter with a fixed blade I've found is a great combination of large cutting hole, you know, creating a chunk through the animal, but also forgiveness in flight. So these are pretty good to put an animal down quickly, um, which I need to do here in the backyards. But if I happen to have the animal move to where I hit bone or hit something, I don't have to worry about penetration at all. This arrow is blown through anything it touches. And uh, I know I wouldn't want to get shot with it. That's for sure. All right, the last two things I keep in my bow case are really pretty simple items, but also super important. And that's the Shale Hybrid Glove from First Light and the True Ball Sweet Spot Pro 2. The Shale Hybrid Gloves are awesome. I love the leather construction. These things I've beaten the snot out of. I've climbed hundreds and hundreds of trees with, and they look good as new. I really like to get these incredibly small. Uh, I like to, to have my gloves be super tight, almost like another layer of skin. And this glove is the perfect option for that. So no issue going up a tree, climbing, beating the hell out of them, and then also texting with them, which is also very important in the tree. So these are phenomenal pieces of gear. And last, but certainly not least, is my true ball release. Now I've been hunting with a hinge for probably the last six months or so. I really, really, really like hunting with a hinge. To me, it's important because I don't have to worry about anything going on behind just aiming the bow. So when I'm at full draw, all I have to focus on is aiming, nothing else. 
I just keep the pin where I need it to go and this does its job and bang. One of the reasons I like this release so much is the fact that it has a safety on it. And I don't need a safety on a hinge when I'm shooting in my backyard, but I just don't want there to be a potential for my bow to go off while I'm drawing it or when I'm not ready for it to fire, when I'm all twisted up in the tree and I'm getting ready to shoot an animal. I just, I want to eliminate that possibility. Maybe in the future, if I've hunted with a hinge for longer, I'll get to the point where I'm comfortable shooting without a safety on a hinge. But for right now, it is super important to me and that's why I'm keeping this in there. I also really like the fact that this hinge has a wrist strap on it. So I'm able to keep it strapped on my wrist. I literally just keep it on my wrist when I'm hunting and pull it up into my cuff or just tie it back on itself, kind of like this. And that's where it chills while I'm hunting. So it's a great way to, to uh, keep it up and out of the way with still keeping it minimalistic and then be able to pull it down when you see an animal, put it in your hand and get ready to go. So overall, the Sweet Spot Pro hinge is just a phenomenal piece of gear that I've been using. Well, that's it. My bow case is pretty simple. Hopefully you guys enjoyed kind of looking at the gear that I take with me in my truck every time I go to a property and hunt, whether it be somewhere in the Midwest, Ohio, Kansas, Kentucky, or over here in the outskirts of Washington, DC, this is what I'm bringing. And these are the items that I find are incredibly essential. I can't live without, and they're important for me to take with me on every hunt. I'd love to hear from you guys if there's anything that you're taking to the woods that you think I should add to my kit. So leave a comment below. Make sure to like, subscribe, hit the alert button, do all the stuff that helps us out. And also another little shameless plug, the shirt that I'm wearing is available on our website. So go over and check it out. This is our Jeep Burrito, super killer shirt. And uh, thanks for watching. See you guys soon. Broke a fucking arrow.